pretty great for the mid game. Yeah, absolutely. They didn't seem like super, super impactful or key cards from looking at this list. And we're going to get this game going. Well, uh, this is definitely how you get it going. Uh, you dream of this as you go to sleep day one. Can I just get on stream and start with a battle VIP pass? Because that is a perfect start here. The Genesect V grabbing the Mew, the Mew V and another Genesect. Sure enough, this hand is going to get even thinner with this quick ball. Yeah, off to a pretty good start for Jose. Um, Charizard start for Natalie, not the best, of course. But as long as she has access to Lugia, then having that Charizard start might not be as bad. Um, it's definitely a one pricer that you can afford to lose in this matchup. The main focus will be loading up a Lugia V-Star with a bunch of powerfuls to take down one of the Mews, and then following that up with an Evil Tall to take down the second Mew. We see Jose is definitely eyeing up the Oracorio early, wanting to make sure that maybe the damage manipulation could be beneficial here. Of course, you don't want to have uh, your Mew VMAX uh, getting knocked out in one hit, and uh, you can avoid a lot of the awkwardness if you just place down that Oracorio and help to prevent some damage. Yeah, absolutely. With Oricorio, the math works out in Jose's favor, where if Natalie, for some reason, cannot attach all four powerful and a choice belt, she'd be off on the KO. Whereas without Oricorio, Natalie would only require three of the powerfuls instead of all four. So definitely a nice uh, Pokemon to have right there on the bench. Also getting the four Seal Stone to have access to any sort of counterplay that Natalie might be trying to do, or just any card that he might be missing. Yeah, it's a, a really great new addition uh, from Silver Tempest where you can basically give all of your V Pokemon this, uh, this ability uh, to reach out and grab one additional card. And you can choose when you want to do this, of course, and uh, finding an opportunity where you can lock in a path or uh, really start to manipulate when players are using the abilities uh, like that. That's perfect against this Lugia deck. Obviously, just waiting. Uh, no point in playing it down now. And uh, probably we could see that path lock on turn two. Yeah, absolutely. Jose definitely doesn't need to play down the path on turn one. It would only stop him. And Natalie won't be able to use summoning star on her first turn. She's looking through her deck, finding that Lugia, finding that Archeops, setting that board up. But she's really under pressure to bench two Lugias. If she only ends up benching one, that could be a little problematic for her. But we do see the capture energy attachment, so we are going to see the double Lugia to prevent any shenanigans from Jose trying to knock out that Lugia to prevent the summoning star. Yep, can't draw it up much better than that. Only the two capture energy, but of course, as you mentioned, the four Lugia to help out with some consistency. And sure enough, finding both of those cards in this situation is going to be very beneficial. Radiant Charizard in the active, not exactly your favorite, but we, it looks like we are going to see an early Collapse Stadium. Not necessarily the card you want to play down, but uh, it was so important to use that Professor's Research, it looked like, that you might as well take advantage of the card. That Professor Research was very harsh, though. That's one powerful energy gone, meaning the one KO on Mew Max is off the table now with a Lugia. And also double Lugia V-Star getting discarded. Natalie does play three copies, and I'm sure with that first search she did off of the incense, she noticed that the third one was available, otherwise you would never <laughs> be able to do this, and there we see it. However, um, that discard is so, so harsh. I'm not so sure if uh, that could be something that Nelly regrets later down the line, not having access to those Lugia, especially. We are going to see a heavy Marnie play from Jose, so that means the Lugia V-Star that Natalie just searched for will now be at the bottom of the deck if that happens. Yeah, I guess there was an opportunity to just pass the turn, play it off slow, and you're holding a hand of double Lugia V-Star Clap Stadium research. And But uh, I guess just understanding that uh, Jose loves to manipulate board states, and or, or at least uh, manipulate what abilities are available. So uh, maybe locking in a path and then playing a Marnie would have really been uh, very awkward here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are going to see Jose try to capitalize on this. Like, if you're sitting on Jose's spot and you see the two Lugia V-Stars in the discard ball and one path to a peak counter in play, you really want to pull off that Marnie path. I think that's going to be really, really good. And he also doesn't know that Natalie does not play Pumpkaboo. So Natalie needs to draw exactly the cards to counter the path to peak, but we don't see the Marnie, though. We see the Serena. Yeah, going to draw up to five, discarding two cards from the hand. 
uh, as you have the choice to discard up to three. And we did see that Grammomatic hitting the discard pile, so it must have not had an additional item to play, or else we would have obviously seen that. Quick Ball is going to come down, and uh, this would generally fill the bench, but we do have a collapsed stadium in play, so Jose gets to keep that parting gift. Indeed, that collapse stadium already helping Natalie a little bit, denying those extra cards for Jose. And seeing how we saw this arena and there's no Marnie, Natalie must be feeling very comfortable right now, knowing that she'll be able to, at the very least, get Lugia V-Star out. And we do see Jose use its V-Star, even though there's no V-Star in play. Forest Hillstone does grant that ability to Genesect. That's right, Star Alchemy, the... Uh the, the the Arceus attempt, <laughs> it's just only one card this time, but uh, honestly, that can be enough. And uh, Mew VMAX players have been waiting a long time to flip a V-Star, and uh, when you get to do double cross switcher, that's, that's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah, now, Jose going for the offensive here, not really for the disruption, choosing to forego the Marnie path option that he could have tried to do with the first seal stone searching for that Marty instead just trying to make sure that he's taking the two price cards and applying the pressure to Natalie I think with the powerful energy in the discard pile the only real way that he could get one hit by it, the usual Lugia deck list is now a single level tall outside of that it will be a two hit KO so that must have been why he went for the aggression right here. Yeah, you can see Jose really looking for the path to the peak right here and just unable to find it with only the two Genesect in play and the five uh, Fusion Strike Pokemon. Not going to be enough to find the path and lock that in, but at least taking a very strong knockout here on the Lugia V. So that's going to be two prize cards down, and uh, Natalie really has to have a pretty impressive turn here uh, to combat what uh, Jose has on the other side. Look at this. It's two Mew VMAX ready to go, and uh, this, this is getting scary when you see that the uh, the Oricorio is down and the powerful, powerful energy is already gone. Yeah, absolutely. That uh, Collapse Stadium did put in the work for Natalie delaying Jose's draw um, with a Genesect in hand, and then that's potentially six, seven less cards that Jose didn't, drew, didn't draw during his last turn. And we're going to see Natalie try to set up this attack here and trying to protect the Lugia with the V-Card energy. It's her best way to try and make sure that Mute doesn't get farther ahead in this matchup. And with one power tablet down, that should complicate things for Jose to get the KO here. Yeah, both of these players are lacking some resources to close out on the big one-hit knockouts at this stage of the game. We also know that Natalie is down one of those double turbos in the prize cards, and there goes the second one to Charizard. So it looks like uh, two additional energies would have to be placed onto the Lugia if it were attacking. And I, I guess this isn't the case, because Charizard is getting ready to go. Yeah, it looks like Charizard will be the Pokemon of choice for Natalie. And we do see something that's very interesting, the Air Balloon getting wow. attached to Lugia. It seems like Natalie wants to go for the three KOs as well onto Jose and capitalizing on the fact that the Collapse Stadium denied a Genesect and now taking this one out. That does not allow Jose to draw a lot of cards this upcoming turn now. Yeah, what a what a strong play there, being able to to target down one of these two prize Pokemon using the Radiant Charizard, uh, just starting to manipulate the prize exchange, and that's really beneficial here. Jose was struggling to find the right cards to close out the second turn, so there's a possibility that there may not be the boss's orders, Serena, or even the cross switchers to target down this Lugia, and even if it is targeted, are there enough power tablets to take a knockout when you see that V Guard energy? Yeah, with the V Guard energy. Jose would need four damage modifiers, that means Choice Belt, and their remaining three power tablets, so it's definitely not going to be easy at all to pull that off. Loss vacuuming away the Marnie right here to get that extra bench space, but that might mean there's no disruption once again from Jose. He might be holding an extra Marnie to do so, but that is certainly, that shows how aggressive Jose wants to go this game, and Natalie can definitely capitalize on that by focusing on the single prizers and very smartly protecting that Lugia with the B-Guard energy. Wow, it looks like there is double cross switcher available in the hand for Jose. And uh, I believe a power tablet as well. So certainly some options available 
in uh, what looked to be a small hand. And of course, when you see a Marnie thrown away from the Lost Vacuum, likely a supporter to go with this double power tablet. Are, are we going for Lukia? Uh, we might be going for, yeah, we are. So this could actually be um, not in Natalie's plans. I mean, Jose does need a really good draw from this Genesect. He needs to find that last power tablet or we're not going to see this KO, but he can play down some cards. However, he drew two pass to a peak. Those are two cards that he cannot play down to thin for his hand for extra draw for Genesec because they stop Genesec. So getting a little convoluted right here. Yeah, you can try. It's just, it's just not going to work. <laughs> yeah, we do see a little awkward on the draws there. Marnie going to just clean that up. So as soon as you find the paths, you can't even play them because you're looking for a little bit more here. Of course, uh, finding the Mu VMAX would be very important, and also that last power tablet to close things out here. Did see the Cramomatic drawn, so that could potentially open up some choices. And the Choice Belt means the other Mu VMAX is no longer a necessary draw here. Very strong hand. Are we about to see that third power tablet hit the board? And then that would mean, ooh, what that's a, a flip. head flip. <laughs> that's so big here. All of the resources coming in very handy. Did we see it? No, I think it is still prized, unfortunately. No, it is Where'd not. It go? <laughs> Must have been played early on. I think even Jose is surprised at that. Is it, uh, is it, is it still in my deck box? <laughs> what, I, <laughs> what happened? We must have missed it in the beginning. I don't see how else it wouldn't be here. Yeah. So that means this Lugia is not going down. I, was, I, I think Jose was going for a KO this turn and then playing the Echoing Horn in order to get the last KO with a boss or Serena onto a Lugia that got put back onto the bench. But unfortunately, we are not going to see that this time around. This Lugia will survive. It is not a lost turn, right? Having that damage on the Lugia is going to be pretty key and could allow Jose to take it down with the... Psychic Leap from you after tanking a hit from the Charizard. So it's still in a decent spot, but definitely would have preferred to get the two prize cards here. You even have access to glistening droplets. You, could, you can do all sorts of wacky things, I suppose, to, to clean this Pokemon up. But uh, I guess we're going to get rid of some of the utility here. The air balloon is going to fall with this second loss vacuum played for the turn. Yeah, that will put a lot of pressure on this Lugia to either... Um, attack or lose those energies, which of course are very, very valuable. Now, having played the Cross Switcher, that did reset the Radiant Charizard's uh, attack effect, which doesn't allow it to attack the next turn. So now we are going to see uh, Charizard as a viable option for this turn. Well, not a lost turn, but certainly an unfortunate finish to turn number three for Jose. N Natalie has to be thinking. That's how we drew it up. We do see the collapsed stadium come down. Not going to be able to manipulate the board and remove the Lugia and the damage, but at least going to uh, lose the Oricorio here. Ooh, so Jose um, was almost going to commit to this skirting the Mew, but then he realized he wanted that for a potential Psychic Leap next turn. But having chosen the Oricorio now means if Natalie is able to find a choice built here, then she'd be able to power up the two remaining powerful energies onto Lugia in the deck and take a knockout on this Mew VMAX. But we do see that she actually was not able to find it. Yeah, a little unfortunate there. Uh, an opportunity did arise, but not going to be able to capitalize. Ultra Ball in the hand. And out. Oh, it's going to be played, and looks like the Evital was potentially going to be searched out. And Natalie, of course, is going to look at some energies as well. Archaeops could likely be the uh, the following play here. Yeah, Archaeops as a follow-up to knock out the Mew could be viable. She was also eyeing the Evil Tall off of that Ultra Ball. But that would be, since one double turbo I believe is still priced, then it would be very costly to power up all five energies onto Evil Tall, along with a manual attachment, and also discarding the two energies from Lugia. That would leave Natalie in a Pretty, pretty difficult spot. But she'd also have the Charizard powered up and the Evil Tall. So that means she only needs a cost effect to be able to close out a, Mew, a, a Pokemon from the bench with the Charizard. Yeah, uh, being down that double turbo that is 
uh, in the prize cards. A little bit unfortunate now, but of course, uh, looks like the energy will be in hand to finish out uh, the five cost attack of this Evital, but it is certainly worth it as a huge knockout is available. Amazing destruction going to remove Mew VMAX from play. Three prize cards down. Natalie Miller, one prize to go to close out game number one. Three prize cards, three energies for Natalie. So that's why she was, uh, she needed to commit so many energies to the Evital right there. And Jose really needs to take a KO on this Evil Tall and disrupt Natalie's hand as much as possible, making sure she doesn't have access to a Ghost Effect, because otherwise that Charizard can easily just take down either Gensect or the Mew V Max, or the Mew V, sorry, on the bench in order to close out this game. Kramomatic would have been a great start to that storybook ending, but unfortunately we see the tails and it's not much left to go. It's going to be the lost vacuum number three to have a zero card hand. Genesect's going to try to do some work and this is where we might finally see a pass to the peak, but I feel like you want to also see the Roxanne to go with it. Yeah, absolutely. Roxanne would be a much stronger play here instead of the Marty. Jose does know that Nelly played her hand down to zero cards, so all she has is the random three prize cards, right? So since it's a random three cards, that it would be a little worse than, um, a little better rather, than having four random cards from the Marty. So Roxanne is the key card for Jose here. Natalie checking the deck size, and it's, it's, it's not much. Uh, Jose will likely be able to see every card necessary to close out, but that also leaves an awkward situation with uh, playing the Roxanne. You have to draw six, and uh, if you don't have enough cards, you're gonna deck yourself. Yeah, I mean, the game probably won't be going on for much longer after, like, either Jose wins the turn after or Natalie does. Um, however, as you mentioned, yeah, like, now with the energies getting exhausted, the potential switch cards or escape rows being utilized, a Ghost for a stall could be problematic for Jose, or if he's not able to take all remaining prize cards, that could also be a problem for him. Oh, looks like... Uh, Jose going to take the risk here, just take the knockout. Hopefully the prize cards that Natalie drew were not enough to close out the game. Any gusting effect would have done the trick. Uh, of course, then you can just absorb this shot from a card like the Archaeops or a Charizard. And then maybe you go and hide to a remaining Mew and then try to lock in that Roxanne after you take this prize card. Now, Natalie doesn't have the boss's orders and if you're Jose and you're, you take out the Pokemon and your opponent doesn't immediately promote the Pokemon that they need with the boss in hand then you're feeling pretty good Natalie trying to figure out what her best possible play here and she's trying to thin the deck as much as possible playing that capture energy getting a completely relevant Pokemon in this matchup which is the Menefi but just trying to maximize the chances that she will be able to draw the boss's orders next turn however even though Jose cannot win the next turn if he does take down that Charizard here, then he'll be able to um, basically eliminate all of Natalie's potential attackers. Just a pass of the turn from Natalie. All of the energies that she would accelerate are in her hand. So just going to pass with the Archeops in play. Jose with the easy decision here, going to switch card, bring that Mew VMAX back into play and take a knockout down to just two prize cards. And that Lugia definitely looks like a great way to close things out. Who is going to find a way to close out? It looks like the professor's research is found from Natalie. Natalie, with that research, might be able to find that boss or Serena into her hand. But that's not enough to win this game. There's no way for her to knock out this Mew Max right now. And then the question becomes, can Jose bring up that Lugia V-Star from the bench and take it down? this upcoming turn. The damage from the Archips does mean that now Charizard can KO the Mew VMAX. So if Jose doesn't win this turn, then Natalie might be the winner. Yeah, I'm not sure if we've seen the boss's orders. I know we have seen the Serena and the four uh, cross switchers. So it would have to be uh, the boss to close out here. Uh, also a switching effect, I suppose. And it looks like we do see the switch cart Mew VMAX back into the active spot. There's only one card left in the deck. There's and a Marnie. Marnie. So 
now Mew VMAX can attack again, that's for sure, and will take down the Arcubes, but Charizard on the bench doing 250 damage can take down this Mew VMAX, so how is Jose planning to close this out? There's no other Mew VMAX to attack with the undamaged one he might be using Psychic Leap? No, yes. Natalie just <laughs> promotes and... The, oh, yeah, just banking removing, on the path yeah. sticking, but it was not there, and the Lost Vacuum is going to clear that up. Excited Heart available, and the Radiant Charizard is going to close things out here. And that is quite a way to finish out game number one. Way here. Oh, no. Maybe we're not. Oh, boy. So Jose prizing two paths to the peaks right here. That means the likelihood of finding the path will on turn one is really difficult and also two battle VIP passes so finding that card that you really really want to find on turn one also became very difficult to for his setup. Yeah one of the worst prize cards to draw when you definitely need some assistance in the mid to late game as you do path lock yourself but you don't have to worry about that because you can't path lock yourself because you only have one in your deck now. Yeah absolutely and there are games where Mew just toss Mew things and draw so well that you don't even need Battle VIP Pass. So Jose will hopefully um, will be hoping for those sort of games here. Getting rid of an, a Cramomatic and a boss of that first tool troll. So I like this, not leaving things to chance. He doesn't have a Battle VIP Pass in his hand, but you don't want to. There's a chance that Cramomatic gives you zero Pokemon. Ultra Ball guarantees that you get one. So better to go with the safe way. Yep, that's... Definitely a viable strategy here. Going to use the Quick Ball to add an additional Pokemon to the bench. And Genesect is really going to have to do some work here. Uh, not sure what the rest of the hand entails, but uh, maybe just one additional card, and that's not it. That's a Power Tablet Pass. It is now Jose going first and like knowing what Lugia decks do. I'm very surprised he chose to go for the double Mew rather than double Genesect. I mean, he was only going to draw a single card off of the first one, but if that's an Ultra Ball or something, like then you get to further your draw. You don't need two Mew Vs immediately on turn one because you're not really threatened with a KO from Natalie. Natalie's the one with the pressure, as we see right now, to get two Lugias in play to make sure that uh, Mew V Max does not target her single one and she is able to use Summoning Star. So very interesting decision from Jose there. We'll see if that has anything to do with it. Honestly, just having three cards in hand and only one Genesect seems uh, like a, a really rough way to start things off without even knowing the prize cards. Uh, I don't know if Jose really did much of a deck search there uh, on that, that opening search with the, the Quick Ball. So uh, could have a lot of surprises lined up, and Natalie is not about that. The Quick Ball is going to quickly throw away this Archeops into the discard pile, which was found by way of the Evolution Incense. And this is exactly how you draw it up once again with that Lugia V and the Capture Energy finding a second Lugia. Now, Natalie has gone through her deck a couple of times, and I could see how, like, um, she, she showed a little bit of frustration. She must have counted the powerful energies and realized they were not there, or all four were not there, and also the Evil Doll was not there. So we're going to finish the turn with a Read the Wind, to get that second Archeops in the discard pile and get that going. But if there's no Oricorio from Jose this turn, then the one kill on a Mew Max is still very possible. Well, uh, finding a Mew off the top, maybe not the favorite card to find. The Genesect, as you were saying last turn, would have felt a lot better, uh, as now there are three uh, Mew V down on the bench. And can this hand be played down? Quick Ball is going to help out, thankfully, and uh, this should lead to some Fusion Strike systems. Yeah, Jose at the very least needs to find that Mew v Max and that Double Turbo, so this is where he really needs to thin his hand, start drawing with those Genesects, but I generally think this is where he would love to have a third Genesect instead of that third Mew right there. Well, we're going to see three cards, and it looks like that's the, the only path, a Loss Vacuum and an Ultra Ball, and uh, if you have to make decisions involving discarding any of those cards, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Indeed. I feel like Jose has to recognize that the Path to a Peak is the key card here, even though you will draw less cards because you cannot play that down before you Genesect. He really needs to slow down Natalie to not use 
the ability from Lugia. Now, there's no Oricori in play, so the option to one KO MUV Max is now back on Natalie, allowing, to, allowing her to do that with three powerful energies that she has available and the choice belt. So she does have that option because there's no more space for Oricorio now. Oh, we found the Mu V Max, I believe. Yeah, it's there, but there's no energy right now. It's going to be up to this final Genesect to at least get a knockout this turn. Where are the double turbos? <laughs> he is holding an Ultra Ball, so he can further thin his hand. I think he's really debating on the path because the other cards that he has are also really good, but he recognizes that the path is a key card here to help him out. So we are going to see the other Mew VMAX, which he can play down on the second Mew. So perhaps getting rewarded by that decision right here. And we'll see if he's able to close out this turn by with a knockout and the path in play. It's on Natalie to make something happen. Yep, everything comes down to this. Needs to find the double turbo first card right there. Finds a second one as well. And that is going to be uh, perfect here. The energy necessary for the Mew VMAX to copy Techno Blast for the knockout on the Lugia V. And the path to the peak comes down to potentially uh, avoid summoning Star next turn. Exactly how you draw it up on turn two. Absolutely. And now here's something interesting. Jose decided to attach the double turbo to the choice belted Mew VMAX, which I think is not um, the best possible play he could have done because now that Mew VMAX cannot attack, right? And it's at risk in the active spot. If Natalie does get the Path to a Peak counter right here, which she does, now she can one hit KO this Mew VMAX. So Jose had played a power tablet. He was getting the knockout on the Lugia V regardless of which Mew VMAX he used but that's just another resource that he will be down now. So a little costly decision, but it's these things that could be the difference at the highest level of play. The smallest things will be making the biggest difference. Yeah, that's a great point. We also see the uh, the awkwardness of the choice belt onto the uh, the other Mew on the bench, not the Mew VMAX. So uh, just uh, maybe a little bit of misplacement on those cards. And uh, every time that you're trying to add that additional 30 damage, you, you need to make sure that it's it's being used to maximum effort. Yeah, every every card counts, especially in day two. You really need, where your margin against your opponents are so small, you really need to make that. Every card that you play has to get you closer to winning. And a small thing, a small, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that, can be very, very costly. Well, I, I think this is exactly how Natalie drew it up, uh, if she could. Uh, the powerful energies and the choice belt on the Lugia V-Star for a huge Tempest Dive knockout on the Mu V-Max, drawing into likely that Evital, and uh, that's three prize cards. Evital could take three more. That's, that's how you close out a, a quick match. Yeah, absolutely. Now we see the Ori Corio coming down one turn too late, but of course Jose did need to extend to find those double turbo to be even be able to attack this turn. But now the f because he has used up one power tablet and because both choice belts have been utilized and the choice belt is not in the MUV Max, there's actually no way for Jose to knock out this Lugia. So his only viable play to not just lose out to this Lugia is uh, hope that the fourth powerful energy is not available for Natalie or Psychic Leaping into a single prizer or two prize Pokemon, which Lugia will then KO. And if Evil Tall gets powered up, or even if Charizard with a costing effect, that could be the way Natalie closed out this game. So it went from the prizes could have really complicated this game from Natalie, but the convoluted turn that Jose had ended up working out really well for her. Yeah, this is uh, definitely going to be a tricky spot here for Jose now. Uh, Natalie down to just the two cards after the Roxanne, so maybe if we saw the path, that'd be bad, but don't have to worry about that because they're both in the prize cards. Ooh, the, the Lost Vacuum very well utilized to remove the choice belt, so now Natalie's option to one KO the MUV Max will only be finding another choice belt, which she only plays two of, so it'll be interesting to see how she decides to approach this turn and what options she has with the two cards in her hand. Yep. Great spot there from Jose to try to give this Mew VMAX an opportunity to hang around another turn. Looks like just going to be copying the Techno Blast once more, get some relevant damage onto this Lugia V-Star and hope that Natalie doesn't find the resources. And yeah, now we're going to see Natalie 
get that gets that powerful energy. So if the choice build was still in play, she would have been able to just attach it and win. She is holding a boss's order, so she must be eyeing her options. Do I attack into this Mu Max and then figure out and then try to chase it with the boss, or do I try to take two prizes right now and get access to more cards next turn? She can use Archeops. That doesn't mean she should, though, because she, you really want to save those energies for Evil Tall. There is merit to attaching perhaps one onto an Archeops to have that option to retreat once the Lugia does go down. But even though her options are very limited, she's definitely in the driver's seat. Looks like Natalie is counting the uh, amplifiers for if Jose could potentially find the reach with Psychic Leap on the following turn if uh, chip damage was placed onto the Mu V Max. Uh, likely by way of uh, Charizard as we see this attachment from the Primal Turbo. Yeah, that sets up very nicely the um, the backup attacker. And we are going to see Natalie, I believe, just do 260 damage thanks to that Oricorio. So holding the energy, holding the boss, and basically unless Jose removes this Mu Max from play or plays down a path to a peak after attacking with it, then it's going to get really difficult for him. I think we saw one choice belt along with two power tablets in the discard pile. I believe then we can see the uh, the power tablet in the lost zone. So that should only leave uh, one the, the one belt and the one tablet left to get some extra damage and the V-guard energy could be very beneficial here. Yeah, and that Lugia sitting at 160 damage, there's no way to take a KO with Psychic Leap, so Jose will need to find another path to a peak, combine that with the attack, and hope that Nali cannot find another attacker. But even the Archibs could take a knockout at this stage, given how damaged the Mu V Max is. So, unless Jose finds another energy and another Mu V Max, it's gonna get rough here. Well, the Kramomatic flipped, not working out this time, and Jose contemplating. Going for the Serena discard, draw three. So no disruption this turn, no Marnie. The Roxanne has already been utilized. He did find the four seal stone, so that means he does have access to either the Mu V Max or the double turbo, but he's still missing one of those cards right now. Now we do see a quick ball here. Let's see what he ends up going for. Um, he really wants to maximize his Gen 6, however, chooses to... or not. Okay, I mean, he started shuffling, so I thought that was a failed search. He must be thinking about a potential deck out, perhaps. Chooses not to grab anything and will draw up to five with Gen Yeah, I believe the Collapse Stadium is still in play. It's just hanging out over in the corner. <laughs> oh. So that might, be, uh, that might be weighing in on the options there. Oh, I generally thought that was like in the lost yeah, one or something. It, it, it looks <laughs> a little farther away than usual, so I, I could have sworn it was not in play anymore. All right, uh, drawing two of those basic Pokemon, which is not ideal for him, and we are going to see the retreat onto a MUV Max. Is that it? There's no more options to draw. The V Star wasn't utilized here. Maybe an Ultra Ball could have been good to grab the other Mu Max if it's even in the deck still. So is Jose out of options here? Yeah, I think this uh, strategy, it, it kind of leaves you in the same situation regardless. Uh, you, you needed to have another Mu down so that you could uh, potentially, if you do get uh, Gust affected up into the active spot after a Psychic Leap, then you don't have to worry about uh, not having a Mu V Max on the follow up, but this leaves you susceptible either way. Indeed, now we do see there's. Now he uses the Forest Seal Stone V Star. He did have the Mu V Max, he did have a Dole to roll, and he did have an Ultra Ball. So I feel like if he had used that to grab the Ultra Ball, he could have further thinned his hand. He could be drawing extra cards, found that Mu V Max, and then hopefully found that Double Turbo to protect the Mu V Max. Of course, he doesn't know that Natalie does have a boss's orders in her hand. And that also means that after he plays Arena, there's no way to disrupt that from Natalie. So we're just holding on to see 
how this game plays out. Yeah, this is uh, a double-edged sword here now. If you want to preserve the Mew that's on the bench, you need to evolve it. But if you evolve it, then you can't use Psychic Leap, and you're going to get knocked out and lose the game. You don't want to lose the game, so <laughs> you're left in an awkward spot where you really just have to hope that your opponent doesn't have the Gust Effect. Exactly. The best play here would be to take a knockout and Psychic Leap, but that is simply not possible. So we are going to see the Cross Switcher here. And the other Genesec now drawing extra cards. We do see the double turbo. Will this be the Mew Max? No, but it is the possibility to find it with the Crown of Matic. If that's a head flip, he would be able to do so. Going to oh, no. throw away the Mew here and go digging even further with another Genesec that bench space opening up as the Collapse Stadium falls. Finds the Mew Max. Yeah, with one MV Max and one Ultra Ball left in the deck, chooses not to take that risk, but Natalie immediately promotes, plays down the boss, knocks out the MV Max, and closes out the game. Yep, and that's going to be it. The Gust Effect was all that was needed to close out there. Jose trying everything to try to put up a wall, understanding that the Gust Effect was going to be a game either way, so no need to use Psychic Leap and uh, not gain a prize card in that situation. Might as well just uh, stay on the aggressive, try to uh, stay in the prize race, but uh, just way too far ahead was Natalie.